morning, Abby Dog. How's it going, sweetie? I think Toby Dog might be still napping. Let's go sneak up on him. Hey, sweet. Oh, <laughs> he heard us. <laughs> hey, Toby Dog. How's it going, bud? You know, people have a lot of questions for me about our dogs. But the one question I'm most commonly asked is, given the fact that we live here in northern Vermont, do our two livestock guardian dogs actually stay outside 24-7? And well, the answer is kind of yeah. I mean, they are working farm dogs, and that is their job. And speaking of job, you can see Toby is always the first one to the door of the duck and goose house. I think he likes the responsibility of going in there and greeting them each morning. Isn't that right, buddy? Well, pal, I gotta pour some water for the birds first, okay? It'll just be a minute, guys. I gotta get birds the water first. And yeah, I'm in the process of changing up my watering system which I'll talk to you about in a minute. But for right now, I'm back to the bucket system. For farm efficiency, it's less than ideal. But hey, at least I'm getting some morning exercise. Now you can go inside and visit your birds, Toby Dog. Okay, I know Toby Dog. You want to see your friends. You want to check on everybody. Make sure they're all okay. Good morning, birds. How's everybody doing this morning, huh? Good to see everybody. And I know I say this every morning, but it's 21 degrees outside, and I'm looking at it, it's 39 degrees inside right now. So, I don't know, that's pretty incredible to me. Abby's gotta come in here and mark her territory, as always. How are the birds? You guys good? So you guys might notice there's a new addition here. It's part of the water system I'm working on. So I have some cinder blocks with a pallet, and then on top of here, I just scored from a neighbor these rain barrels. Looks like the chickens might be trying to poop in here. And anyway, my plan is I'm gonna start filling these up with water, and then when I try to water the birds in the morning, I'm gonna actually use the hose off the back of here and send it out here down the hill. That might sound a little bit more confusing than it actually is, so let me show it to you in action. Release the quacking! <laughs> All right, so what I'm planning is, I'm gonna take the water that's in here, run it out those spigots, and in a hose, run it down the hill, and in the morning, I can just open up the hose and fill in their waterers. You may notice that the water trough go on like a downward sloping pattern. That way all the water runs downhill and goes out that way. It doesn't create a mess up here. The only downside to it is this area down here becomes like a skating rink. And so that's why it's really important that I wear my crampons. If you have a farm or a homestead in a cold northern climate, I strongly encourage you to get a pair of these. They are such an important safety feature. I can't tell you the number of times I've almost busted a hip slipping on some ice. Because when you have birds, you have a lot of ice. And so that builds up over the course of the winter. My ice spikes help me stay stable. And so if you want to get the pair that I wear, I'll leave an affiliate link and you guys can check that out. But regardless of the brand or variety, I strongly encourage people to get them. Because unlike birds, us human feet are very slippery on this ice. But anyway, I digress. I'd be able to run the hose from these rain barrels. Now you guys might be saying, well, wait a minute, Morgan. Won't these rain barrels freeze and then you have just giant ice cubes in your hoop coop? And the answer is, I already thought about that one. And so what I'm gonna be doing is actually constantly putting fresh water into these every single day, doing it in the morning. The sun will heat these rain barrels up and they'll actually store warmth overnight. It'll actually help raise the temperature, I believe, inside the hoop coop. And then just as the water is getting cold enough to freeze, I'll dump it out and put it in the bird waterers. And then I'll run a second hose from my water hydrant down along here inside the hoop coop where I can fill them up and start the whole darn cycle all over again. I'm not actually sure if this is gonna work, but I feel like it's worth a shot. All right, I know I got some hungry birds. Let's feed the birds. Yeah, so this is kind of what I was planning when I was thinking about having a winter bird area. Something where the birds can easily get inside and outside each day. It's easy to feed and water them. And then if they wanted to wander, they have plenty of space. As you can actually see here, they go all the way down all around the hoop coop during the day. They kind of actually follow where the sun is. And so while they usually start their mornings where all the water and food is first thing, they'll migrate down this way over the course of the day. All right, Toby Dog. All right, Abby Dog. Let's go. Come on. Come on, guys. Good job. For those of you guys wondering about an Abby Dog training update, she's doing really, really good. I'm actually quite impressed with how she has grown up. No, no jumping. The one behavior 
that she's actually started doing that she wasn't doing before is she's starting to jump up on me. And so I gotta work on her with the jumping. And so that's actually the next thing I'm gonna be focused on. She actually hasn't even been wearing her vibrating collar lately. She's been good with just kind of doing her thing. Of course, when Toby Dog was Abby's age, he actually had a similar issue. And so I just had to work with him and be kind of persistent. And eventually she got it. What I try to do is redirect her to just sit when she tries to jump up. Yes, good girl. Because you're sitting, you get attention. That's a good girl. And yes, Toby Dog, you get your attention too. But anyway, to address the topic of conversation that I started this video with, yeah, people are often surprised to hear that my livestock guardian dogs stay outside 24 seven, even in our cold Vermont winters. And to be quite honest with you, I could see how for somebody who's used to the concept of a house dog could be shocked by something like that. All right, let's go into the dog barn. Do any dogs want to join me in the dog barn? Hey, Toby Dog. Yeah, you want to come in the dog barn with me? Oh, Abby joined as well. <laughs> so yes, the space that was affectionately named the dog barn is working out really great. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, doggies. I'm finding that both dogs are spending the time in here. You know, a lot of folks have said that I need to make this a smaller space and that it's too big, but I actually think it works out really well for both dogs because, you know, Toby Dog and Abby Dog sometimes can get on each other's nerves. More like Abby Dog can get on Toby Dog's nerves. And so the fact that they both can be in here and have their separate spaces works out good. What I find is Toby Dog usually likes to take that corner and Abby Dog usually likes to take that corner. And so it works out pretty good. I think there's a couple improvements I might end up making. I'm I might build some sort of wind barrier right by the door. I'm not sure if I'm gonna build it inside the dog barn or outside the dog barn. Now, some folks might say that I should have known that I was gonna to need to do something like that. And when you look at their door, it's sort of insufficient. But honestly, the reason I did that is because I wanted to make sure that the dogs got comfortable with going in and out the door and they didn't get freaked out by some additional sort of barrier or blocking thing. And so now that they're comfortable with the house and they realize that this is a nice, warm and dry place to go, when it gets cold or there's snow or wind or something like that. Now I'm gonna to start to build in some enhancements. I think the other thing that people have commented on is, you know how you can see sort of daylight through some of the slats of the boards behind me. And that was actually by design too. When I built this for ducks, I did that because I wanted this building to be able to breathe really easily. And when it comes to our livestock guardian dogs, I wanted to make sure that they felt comfortable and like that they could hear what was going on around them. You know, in the past I've actually built houses for Toby where he wasn't very comfortable with it because he didn't like the fact that he was sort of sealed in and sort of protected from the world too much. He wanted to be able to hear what was going on outside. By having this loose built barn structure, I think it actually helps make him more comfortable. The other thing is too, when it comes down to it, the dogs aren't coming in here to get warm. They're coming in here for a soft, comfortable bed and they're coming in here to get out of the rain and the wind and the snow and like they don't want to be exposed to the elements. That's the more important thing. You know, if it's just like negative 10 below, I've had days where I've come out here and I see Toby just napping out in the yard. So the idea that they need like significant insulation is just a fallacy. That's us applying our human perspective to the needs of a dog. But when you see a livestock guardian dog like the Maremma, which is the breed of dog that both Toby Dog and Abby are, a lot of times they're actually living in like three-sided shacks. And so the idea of a structure like this actually might be more of an overbuild than an underbuild. And so while I appreciate the concern that I sometimes hear from viewers who say, hey, gosh, you know, how can you do that to your dogs? It's cruel and I would never do that to my dog. When it comes to the conditions that both Toby Dog and Abby live in, this is very much what they were built to do. They have animals that they have to protect. They have about a nine and a half acre yard that they can patrol and run around and do whatever they want in 24 seven. They get plenty of food and fresh drinking water. They get regular veterinary care and grooming. I genuinely do all of the things I possibly can to ensure that these dogs are happy and healthy. And from everything I've seen, I feel like that's very much the case. And so I know that there are well-meaning folks out there saying, do they actually live like this? The answer is yes. I mean, even when it comes down to their coat, I mean, look at this. So this is Abby's coat. And Abby's coat is actually a little bit thinner than Toby Dog's coat. Like if you want to see the comparison, like Toby's got just a longer outer coat than Abby, but both dogs have a double coat of fur. And so actually what I find is it's oftentimes the winter months that they're the happiest and it's in the summer that they actually struggle a little bit because sometimes like if we have like a 90 degree day, it can be a little tough for them. Oh, don't worry, Toby, you get attention too. We just all have the baby Abby here. Yeah. <laughs> and as I've said in a couple of other recent videos, I really have started to, to enjoy 
coming into the dog barn after I do my morning chores and hanging out with these goons because it's just like such a great comfortable place to spend time with them. Isn't that right, you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Abby, you got burdock on you. I just found a burdock. Yeah, yeah. Actually, if there was one thing that I would do to try to improve their health, it would be to eradicate all the burdock on our farm. All right, come on, guys. We're going to go check on the cattle. Good morning, Moo Crew. How are my Mookers doing? How's it going, Annabelle? You doing good? Hey, Audrey One. How's it going? Yeah, everybody's doing good today. Looks like they still have one bale that they probably need to go through, but I should probably open that other bale up here. So let's head on in and do that. Come on dogs, you can come in and say hi to the cows. So with this gate, it kind of locks like that, but I'll usually clamp the carabiner just to be like double sure that nothing goes wrong. How's my gal Ariel doing? Good to see you, sweetheart. So I'm continuing to work on a project inside the barn with Ariel, but you guys are gonna have to find out about that one in a different video. But needless to say, she's becoming more and more comfortable with me. Not 100%, but more comfortable. As I've said in other videos, I don't like that I have to use these plastic wrap bales. And I'm exploring solutions for the future. And I'm also looking for potential ways that I can recycle this plastic. I don't have any great answers on it yet, but hopefully one day I will. As soon as I unwrap that fresh bale, the whole crew got very excited. All right, Joey Ramon, watch out. Here comes the hay. Oh yeah, you guys like that stuff, huh? Well dig in, you got a whole nother bale now. Actually, as I'm looking at it, I probably don't want it exactly there or else it could roll back towards the gate. So I really should bring it and roll it forward. Now sometimes if the plastic gets a little bit of a tear, I gotta slough off the edges. They only like the stuff on the inside. You can see Abby's making herself at home. Abba dog, are you rolling in cow poop? <laughs> Ugh, now I'm gonna have to brush you. That is gross, girl. I swear, that dog drives me crazy sometimes. <laughs> okay, large white farm dogs, come with me. Large shaggy cows, you stay out here. So do you guys wanna see something crazy going on in a different part of the farm right now? Check this out. So we have officially broken ground on our brand new barn that's gonna be going right here. My buddy Alfred. My buddy Alfred. My buddy Alfred has started to put the piers into the ground that the building's gonna to start to sit on. He's starting with the four corner piers that you see right here. That conduit actually has cabling and electrical lines in here, so we'll be able to power up the whole structure as well. Doing the digging has been quite a challenge. I don't know if you guys saw the short video I posted the other day, but like this boulder was buried underneath there, and this is only like a third of the boulder. The other two thirds of it sit right here. And so now the way this is gonna work is there's gonna be a pier, I think, I'm not sure if it's every 10 feet or every 12 feet, that sits in the ground all the way through here, all the way through here. This pink line that you're seeing right here is actually the footprint of the building. So this is like the front of the building, and this right here is the back of the building. So yes, it's gonna be massive. One tricky thing that we have to deal with here too is, so the pink string is actually the base height of the building as well. So back here at this corner, everything's nice and good. You just have to dig a hole and drop the pier in. But as you get closer to the road, the ground slopes down. And so in order to keep it level, this is actually the top of the building over here. And then what's even crazier is that this is the back corner of the building. And so right here is the back corner of the building. Like this would be where it meets the ground. And so if you look at it, right, I don't know, it's about four feet or so in distance. So that means we're gonna actually have to mound up dirt and gravel and sand to fill in this entire space to make the entire base of the building level. It's gonna be quite the undertaking. But yeah, you guys will watch as we, and by we I mean Alfred, end up putting in all the piers here and that's the goal to get that done before the ground freezes too hard. I think we're gonna make it just by the skin of our teeth. And then by the springtime, we'll actually begin building our building. So thanks for watching everybody. And by the way, we're in the final weeks of the Goldshaw Farm calendar scale for 2023. So take a look down at that link right there or down below. Thank you for watching and supporting us. And I will be back very soon with another video. And yes, Ginny is very happy that I'm back to wearing my winter chore coat because she can climb up it.